there's no such thing as energy, at least if you take Einstein seriously. And that might be surprising because, you know, Einstein was the guy who wrote down E equals MC squared, where E stands for energy. But the other thing Einstein is famous for, the whole warping of space-time thing, makes it essentially impossible to even mathematically define energy in any universe that is remotely interesting. Fortunately, Lev Landau and Evgeny Lifshitz did the best they could and came up with a quantity that, at least, does some of what we want energy to do. The issue, as is now hopefully clear, is gravity. The way we think of gravity now is that it's the consequence of the curvature of space-time. Matter tells space-time how to curve, space-time tells matter how to move. And our physics intuition tells us that gravity should have energy associated with it, like some kind of potential energy, so that we can talk about the amount of energy it takes to escape orbits and so on. But if gravity is just the curvature of space-time, then that energy somehow has to be captured by some geometric feature of that curved space-time. But it turns out, for mathematical reasons relating to the existence of a free-falling frame where gravity is unobservable, it's impossible to write down a formula that captures the potential energy for gravity due to this space-time curvature in a way that's independent of how you choose to measure it. Fortunately, you can write down such a formula if you have something to compare your space-time against, so that the way you measure it is picked for you. The trick is to use an empty, flat space-time as your reference, and that's exactly what Landau and Lifshitz did in writing down their so-called Landau-Lifshitz pseudotensor. The idea behind the Landau-Lifshitz pseudotensor is that you imagine you're living in an empty space-time and that the reason paths are moving around is because of a gravitational force, describable by a quantity called a Christoffel symbol. And just like for electromagnetism, the energy associated to that force is essentially that force squared. If you're careful about this, you wind up with a quantity that behaves exactly how you want an energy to behave when you're far away from any gravitational source. It's conserved. And in fact, the quantity we get exactly matches what we should get when considering, for example, gravitational waves. When two black holes spiral toward each other and collide, the resulting black hole always weighs less than the sum total of the two original black holes. So where did the missing mass go? It turns out the black hole in spiral releases tons of gravitational waves. And when we compute the energy of those gravitational waves using the Landau-Lifshitz pseudotensor, we get precisely the energy equivalent of the missing mass from the collision. That is, the missing mass is converted to energy in the form of oscillating spacetime. Now unfortunately, this only works when the spacetime we're working with looks flat sufficiently far from the gravitational sources. So it can't capture a description of energy in every possible spacetime because there are spacetimes that never look flat, perhaps because there's intrinsic curvature, or perhaps because there's nowhere far from the gravitational sources. Now, our spacetime looks flat at medium scales, so the LL pseudotensor works decently well here, but you can never get far enough away from matter for it to work exactly, so the search continues for better and better ways to talk about energy in the cosmos.